Hello there, God bless you. This is Prophetic Intercession with Amel. You are welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, especially if this is your first time. A special welcome to you. On this channel, we share the word of God. I give you prophetic words, prophetic declarations as the Lord lays it in my heart and as he gives me utterance. And I also come on life at least once every day for us to pray and believe God that the promises that he has the promises he has given to us manifest speedily. So if you're yet to subscribe, go ahead and touch that subscribe button and do not forget to turn on your notification bell so that whenever we are live or there is a release of a new prophetic word, you will not miss out. God bless you in the name of Jesus and to all my returning subscribers, you already know i love you you're always in my prayers i'm always thinking about you that is why god keeps talking because my mind is always open towards the direction of hearing prophetic messages that you might need that might come handy to you in time hallelujah god bless you and god says he still wants you he can do it without you but he doesn't want to when God gave me this prophetic word, I was broken to my core. I was broken. I was humbled. I mean, I spent the better part of it. When I received this, I was just praying and crying. Because um, in as much as it is not easy, in, uh, in as much as it is difficult, but it is still a privilege. I tell you, it is a real privilege. <laughs> I don't know. I pray that God helps me to release this prophetic word the same way he laid it in my heart because it was so heavy. You know what they say about destiny? They say that people, when people talk about predestination, they say before you were born in your formed in your mother's womb, they, they quote the Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, God ordained you and he called you to do something specific. And when people talk about predestination, they, they, they talk about it like whatsoever you were called to do, that is what you're going to do. But I have come to realize in a difficult way that God can have one thing for you. And yet your life turns out to be something else. God can create you, call you, destine or put a purpose in you for one thing. And you become something else for many reasons. Number one, when you have not discovered your purpose, abuse is, in, is inevitable. When the purpose of a thing is not discovered, abuse is becomes inevitable for example now this is a victory oil this victory oil was was the purpose of it is for um it okay let me not let me not say for deliverance for but it has a super supernatural purpose it is aimed at we, we use it to pray for people anoint yourself for protection pray deliverance you know so many things now if someone gets into my house and seize this without knowing the purpose for it they might use this to fry maybe egg because it's olive oil actually so they might use it to cook their meal they might use it to fry something why because the purpose is not known and so abuse is inevitable and you can choose you can still know that this is an anointing oil that is meant to have supernatural benefits but you decide to use it otherwise it's the same. God can call you to do something else and you decide to do the contrary. And guess what? God is not a dictator. He would let you do whatever you want to do. He say, The Bible says, God speaking, he says, I place before you today life and death. But I advise you to choose life that you might live. God will not force you to do what you don't want to do. So even though you were created to do this particular thing, if you decide to do contrary, God will not force you. If you decide to go another route, God is not going to bend your arm. God 
said this to me by showing me some examples of great people that were meant to do different things in their lives yet they turn out to be something else different i mean he showed me that with the people around me there were people that had a great calling while we were growing up they had a great calling we all knew that they were supposed to be great men and women of god by the exploits they did for god and at some point in their lives they decided to take another route and God did not, you know, God did not force them. God did not try to bend their arms to let them do what whatsoever he wanted them to do. It has to do with marriage and everything. There are people that maybe God says, this person is your kingdom spouse. They are the one for you. And you decide to go another way. God will not, you know, he will not come and spoil the marriage. The marriage might work. You might be with that person and you live till ripe old age until God calls you home. Maybe you might even be happy, but your marriage will not serve the purpose for which God wanted it to be. You have chosen to go another way and God will not stop you from doing that. But guess what? Now, this is the part where God really got me humbled. This is the part where I was so broken. I was so broken when God started telling me about this other part. There are people that God can really do without. As a matter of fact, when those people decide to go the other way, he chooses other people. Immediately you decide to walk out of the purpose of God for your life. He chooses someone else to fit into that position. Look at the case of Vashti and Esther. Vashti was created for beauty. She was the way she was formed. If you if you study a little bit of theology, you understand that Vashti even meant beauty. She was created to showcase her beauty. But once she decided to walk against that path, once she was required to flaunt her beauty and she refused, she walked out right out of that path and God brought in someone else. Whenever God calls you to do something and you do not do it, He's going to raise someone else to do, to do it. He says, if you do not praise me. I'm going to raise tones, which means he's not deficient. He can always do it with someone else. Now, God can really do it with someone else, but he has decided to do it with you. You might be asking yourself, why is my life so difficult? Why am I not like A? Why am I not like X, Y, Z? Why is my life so difficult? Why is it that God always compels me to do certain things, even though I don't want to do it? You are what I always call, you fall under the Jonah category of people. The Jonah category of people are people that have, God can do it without them, but he decides to do it with them. And guess what? It is a great privilege. When the Lord opened my mind towards this, I could not stop crying. It is a great privilege for God to, to superimpose his purpose in your life. For God to not let you go astray. It is a great privilege for God to pick so much interest in your life that whenever you want to go astray, he, he cause corrects you. He puts you on course. God would have raised another prophet to go do Jonah's work, but he decided to use Jonah. God would have raised someone else to do what he wants you to do. But he decides to use you to do that thing because he wants you to live a fulfilled life. He wants you to live a life of impact. You might be asking yourself, why must I be the one to do this? You know, there are people who cannot run away from what the assignment God has given them. No matter how far you go, you realize that you still come back to the same place. No matter how far you think you have run away, you realize that you still come back to the same spot. God refuses to let you go. He will pass you through everything you have to go through, but you are going to do that which he wants you to do. You know what? God told me something about Jonah's story and I was like, oh no, please God, do not let me go through that. Jonah went through a compulsory three days fasting that made him to repent. When the fish swallowed him, he was in the fish's belly for three days. Three days without food, without water. Three days in darkness. Three days entangled with all the rubbish that was in the fish's belly. Three days of misery. For him to repent and say, God, I want to do your will. Maybe you are going through your own three days. You have been trying to run away from what God wants you to do. And three days is not literally three days. It might be three months. It might be three years. God puts you in that dark place. And that you, 
in a place where you get to repent and you tell God, I am available to do your will. Please, Lord, have mercy. Remember, God can do this without you. But him choosing to do this with you is a rare privilege. He wants to use your life to create impact. He wants you to use your life to do something marvelous. He doesn't want you to just throw away your life like that. He doesn't want you to just throw away your life. He wants to use you. And it is a privilege. Maybe yours might be your marriage. You try to go somewhere else because the direction God gave, showed you is not very beautiful. It's not really nice. You try to go to date someone else or marry someone else and it backfires and you have to come back. It might be business. It might be ministry. I don't know what exactly that is. But if God can do it without you and yet he decides to do it with you, it is a rare privilege you should not take for granted. It is something you should thank him for. Thank him for deciding not to trash you and use another person. Thank him for... When, like, like I said, when God, when God told me this, I just kept crying because I found myself in this Jonah generation. I find myself in this place where even when I want to go away from the things that God God created me for the things he wants me to do. I find him strong arming me back into that position. And it is a rare privilege because at the end of the day, I realize that it is better. It is greater. It even, I mean, it is better for me to even be in that place. At the end of the day, it might not be easy, but it is better. It makes me fulfilled. It makes me live a life of impact and at the end of the day, I get to give God the glory. I pray for you that is watching me right now. Maybe you are watching this video because you are in the Jonah generation. You are that person that God can do it without you, but he has decided to do it with you and it's really heavy on you. I pray that God is going to help you do his will in the name of Jesus. No matter how challenging, no matter how tough it might seem, I pray God will empower you for a greater good in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you receive this word with gladness? My prayer for you is that God will bless you and keep you cause his face to shine upon you, that he will be gracious to you and give you peace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I will see you in our next video as God gives me grace.